Hi, it's Ed Butowski. So today I want to talk about the difference between U.S. sectors and industries and which ones are being favored right now and which ones you should be avoiding right now. I also want to toss in that there is a difference between strategic investing and tactical investing. Strategic investing is how your portfolio should be positioned possibly for the rest of your life. And those should just take rebalancing where if you had a, a tactical position in utilities and at 5% and it went up to 8%, you would then cut back down to 5% at some point. Um, that is strategic investing. Tactical investing is when you get into industries and you look at specific industries and those are usually investments that last six months to 12 months. Um, you should have about 80% of your portfolio in a strategic portfolio and 20% tactically. And I talk about this a little bit at the end of this video as well. Uh, today is June 23rd, 2023. Just want to make sure that that's noted as to exactly when I'm saying this. Um, a, a sector is one of 11 sectors with the S&P 500, and those range, as you'll see in a moment, between technology, healthcare, financials, industrials, consumer staples, consumer discretionary, and so on. Uh, the industries are subsections in these sectors. So as you can see here, technology has semiconductors and software. Those are different industries inside the sector. So right now it is being you know, looked at and that is overvalued at this point. So you can see here that this is a minus and this is neutral and this is plus. And this is underweight, neutral, and overweight. And technology should be underweighted at this point. Healthcare, on the flip side, should be overweighted. That means that these have not been performing very well and probably should perform well in the future. Financials are broadly diversified because property and casualty insurance should be overweighted while asset management and custody banks should be underweighted. On the industrial side, they should be underweighted uh, across the board, or at least mainly. Uh, but you can see here the electrical equipment is on a neutral basis. Professional services and commercial services and supplies is overweighted. But overall, industrial should be underweighted. Consumer discretion, uh, home building and retailing should be underweighted. But you have restaurants that should be overweighted. And Kava is a good example of you know, a company that came out and did much better than what people expected. So you saw a lot of, a lot of uh, restaurants do very, very well. Consumer staples across the board should be overweighted. Absolutely overweight that category. Communication services, uh, telecommunication services like AT&T uh, should be overweighted and Verizon should be overweighted. On the energy side, even though we've had a really rough year so far, they're still looking at it as being a neutral weighting. So they're not very positive on, uh, on the uh, energy sector. Same thing with materials. But utilities, that's something that I put out a video a couple of weeks ago, pounding the table for utilities. And they expect the same thing, that you have sideways interest rates and you have the cost to generate energy has come down considerably, which sets up for a really, really wonderful play in the utility sector. And then you have the restaurant, excuse me, you have the real estate sector, which is a neutral uh, weighting. But I'll get to that in a moment. So... This then goes into the industrial uh, top 10 industries overall ratings. And you can see here utilities are at the top. Um, and these are the ones that are the most favorable to be looking at right now. And then here are the ones that should be avoided. Home building should be avoided. Semiconductors should be avoided and so on down. And here are the most undervalued industries. And you can see here on the REIT side, 86% score on REITs, and that's why I said that the real estate, you know, there are certain sectors of the real estate market that you should avoid. We should be avoiding uh, commercial real estate at all costs. That scares the living you-know-what out of me. Uh, but there's other uh, retail uh, real estate sectors that look very attractive. Um, and you have utilities, again, at 93%. Casino and gaming, that's an interesting one because you have Las Vegas Sands and MGM, which have been just decimated for quite some time, have really started to come back quite a bit. Then the overvalued industries are the semiconductors and NVIDIA being one of them, AMD being another one. Uh, then you have consumer finance. Uh, and it's just interesting to look at. And again, these are industries inside the sector. So not all the sectors should be looked upon in, in a negative basis. 
uh, you should look in, and figure out exactly what sectors make sense. And here you have the hotel, restaurant, uh, resort REITs, um, industrial REITs, and office REITs are down here at 78%. But all because they're oversold doesn't mean they should be bought. So that's another important factor to look at. Um, and uh, that's mainly what I wanted to share with you today was that you have 11 sectors, but then you have industries inside that that look attractive or don't look attractive. And uh, if you want to do an analysis on exactly where your portfolio you know, lays in this respect, uh, or lies, I should say, uh, please uh, you know, send me a message or get me a, an example of what it is that you want to talk about, and I'll be happy to analyze it for you. But again, this is a tactical play. This is not a strategic play. A strategic play is how your portfolio should be positioned for the rest of your life. Tactical means taking advantage of different uh, shortcomings or overbought situations. And there's an important difference. Your tactical investments should represent about 20% of your overall portfolio. Strategic portfolio should be about 80%. So there's a big, big difference between strategy um, and tactical investing. So just wanted to let you know that. Thanks.